Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Women's World. Today we are very much honored and delighted to have with us Ambassador Wafaq Basim. Uh, ambassador Wafaq Basim is an extraordinary Egyptian woman. She is an amb ambassador and she has been ambassador, uh, Egypt's ambassador to Romania and uh, to the Vatican. And also she is the first woman to be the assistant of the foreign minister for cabinet affairs. Let me welcome you, uh, Ambassador Rofet. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you. And uh, now I would like to begin with you about your dream of uh, working in uh, the diplomatic field. Now, this is not easy for, for a girl or for a woman. You were uh, one of the top achievers in Sanoyama or high school. And I believe that was the first step for you or the gate that opened uh, the doors for you uh, to, to start achieving your dreams. Actually, I think that dream started when I was just a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, I was um, um, attracted by the idea of entering into politics, into uh, becoming a diplomat. Um, I come from a family that reads a lot, that was very much interested in politics. Um, during my youth, we have a huge library. Most of the books are political books beside the literature and other things. And since my childhood, I was very much interested by politics. Um, I used to follow, even as a child, uh, what was the independence movements in Africa, mm. what is happening in the Arab world, maybe though without realizing completely what it meant. But anyway, it was attracting me. Yeah. And when I choose in Sanawayama, as you said, in high school, I choose to enter the literary uh, section, mm. despite my high marks in other fields. And I knew that I wanted to go to the Faculty of Economics and Political Sciences, and that later on I will uh, enter the um, national uh, competition to become a diplomat. Mm -hmm. And you did, and you succeeded. And I did, yes. How was it for you? I mean, uh, in, in a society like the Egyptian society or the Oriental society, it's not easy for a woman to um, become a, a diplomat because it's a very challenging job. It requires a lot of time, it requires a lot of traveling, and this adds to the challenges that face uh, women in, in our society who uh, look forward to having a family and so on and so forth. So how was it for you? Let's say that I was lucky mm -hmm. on one part and I was determined on the other uh, to become a diplomat and not any diplomat. I wanted to be a seasoned diplomat, one of the top diplomats. Mm -hmm. And that meant that I had to work very hard that I had to, to do my best to excel in the competition, whether the written one or the oral one, and then the interviews. Um, I owe to my family, and especially to my late mother, uh, the encouragement, the support, and the pride she had <coughs> to have her daughter as a diplomat, mm -hmm. um, and to achieve the, the, the dream, my dream, and my family's dream and my father's dream as well, my late father's dream. So she was with me at every step and I wanted to make it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what is good about that national competition is that no discrimination is there. Mm -hmm. You enter a national competition, there are no tag names when the papers are corrected, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, though a very old and very classical uh, institution. We are among uh, the very old diplomacies, not only in the region, it could be in, in the Mediterranean and even before many European ministries of foreign affairs, is still an avant-garde institution. It does not discriminate. Your credit comes from the fact that you're good, you own your languages, you know how to work, and you pass the exams or the competition, then you are chosen. Then there are difficulties, but it's, it comes in the career. Mm -hmm. um, women diplomats face, even like men, but more for women, the problems of the family. Yes. Um, how are you going to partner? 
uh, how is he going to accompany you if you go abroad or how is he going to deal with his own career if he's not from um, the diplomatic career um, the children their movement their changing of societies all the time um, sometimes they think you don't you won't make it but i had bosses senior uh, ambassadors who taught me a lot who supported me all along and i will always pay them credit for helping me despite or even if i was a woman they didn't make me feel that i'm different than my peers men mm. uh, i owe it to um um, Mr. Amr Moussa, who, is, who was my first mentor, Mr. Saad al Faragi, Mr. Abdur Firiji, ambassadors, all of them. And I owe it also to a minister and now Secretary General uh, of the Arab League, um, Mr. Ahmed Abu al who, who has the guts or who had the guts to appoint a woman as a first chief of cabinet of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Egypt. Okay, how was that for you now, occupying this post, and I'm getting, I will get to the other post that you occupied later, but um, occupying that post, how was it for you? Big what did challenge, you mean? Big mm -hmm. challenge, big mm -hmm. challenge. And because you, you work, and I don't know, a zillion mm -hmm. hours per day, um, you have to be available all the time. You have a political task, but you have an administrative task as well. Mm -hmm. You coordinate inside the ministry with the different departments, and you coordinate with your peers in other ministries, with the presidency, with the council of ministers, for all issues that pertain to foreign affairs. And if I did not have a supporting husband, to uh, whom I owe him a lot because he could bear with these very long hours of work, stress, being um, on call 24 hours, um, and the support of my children, I don't think I would have done uh, that. Um, it has, you have to be firm, but at the same time, flexible and nice. Mm. You have to know your subject very well. You cannot afford to be as hesitant or not knowing what you're talking about. You have to have the right information at the right time, especially when you are working with uh, circles outside the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and coordinating important events, important issues uh, that are for the interest of the country. Okay. Uh, Ambassador uh, Wafet now. President Abdel Fattah Sisi issued a presidential decree appointing you as Egypt's ambassador to the Vatican or the only apostolic see. What does this mean to you and as the reflection uh, of uh, such a post in relations between Egypt and the Vatican? Um, my experience as uh, an ambassador to the Holy See was quite a unique experience. I was previously ambassador to a bilateral country um, like Romania, mm -hmm. which was a great experience because in bilateral, you get the outcome right away. Mm. You, you do the right thing, you have an outcome. Uh, it doesn't work, you see it right away. Mm. And I had the experience of being permanent representative to the UN in Geneva, which is what we call multilateral diplomacy. And in this is how to negotiate, how to defend your country, your rights, uh, and it was at a very difficult time. It was after the revolution of the 30th of June, and the whole world was having a very wrong idea about what was happening in Egypt, and we had to explain that. Then came the appointment as ambassador to the Holy See. Mm. The Holy See is a very unique, or the Vatican is a very unique state. It's the smallest in the world, but it has so much influence on all the cultures that are um, influenced by the Catholicism. Mm -hmm. It's the seat of the uh, Catholic Pope. Pope. He is the leader of a state. He's a political 
uh, entity figure, mm. but he is a very important, if not one of the most important religious figures in the in world. world. If you count that you have more than a billion, um, more billions of uh, people in the world that um, are Catholics. So he has, no matter what you say, if the, if the country is secular and uh, if it's um, a civilian state, there is always that people influence. People listen to, to him, yes. People listen to him because he always listen sends because, a message of peace, yes, tolerance. very much so. Mm. And uh, this particular pope, Pope Francis, mm. um, where we almost started at the same time mm. working in the Holy See he, as the pope and the head of state and me as an ambassador. Um, he is very special. He, he is the first non-European pope. So he comes from what we would call our part of the world politically. He comes from Latin America, mm. um, from uh, Argentina. But at the same time, he knows what is developing countries, what are their problems, their aspirations, their dreams, uh, problems of poverty, problem of empowering women, problem of youth. He believes in the family. He believes in uh, social justice and all of the peace, of course. Mm. He thinks that Egypt is a very important country in its own region, which is true. It's a pioneer. And if you want to achieve peace, welfare, progress, and stability in the Middle East and in the Arab world and even in Africa, you, you need to have Egypt on board. Um, he is close in this sense to also the issues where Egypt has its major interest. Mm. His meeting with President uh, El Sisi um, was a success from minute one. Mm. Um, the chemistry went well. They were seeing with the same uh, eyes to eye and uh, with the same way of thinking um, on very important issues. Peace in the Middle East, stability, combating terror, um, especially the one that is using religion, no matter what mm. is the religion, as a, a front or a mm. pretext to um, disseminate and spread terror, mm. Mm. or to impose a certain way of governing and ruling. Yes. And they decided both to join, to join efforts in tackling these important issues. Mm. Uh, we are, um, I mean, as soon as uh, President Sisi went back to Egypt after his visit to Vatican, he sent an official invitation to the Pope to come to visit Egypt um, when it will be possible for the two great leaders uh, and the time permits, and we are hoping that he will be uh, coming to Egypt to return the historic visit that took place um, in November last year uh, in the Vatican. Hopefully that will happen. But now, so. uh, you also attended the ambassador, uh, you attended a, a very important conference in Paris where uh, the conference discussed means of empowering women politically and economically, means of combating violence against women with all its forms, and in general, uh, enhancing the status of women. Tell me more about this conference. Um, I am honored to be member of the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee of the National Council of Women. Mm. And the Foreign Affairs Committee, one of its tasks is to participate together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in a process launched by the Union for the Mediterranean on the issue of empowering women. Mm -hmm. um, empowering women goes through meetings that take place on four important, let's say, axes pillars. or pillars, mm -hmm. uh, if you wish. One, on empowering women economically. Uh, the second one, on um, women and leadership. Uh, the third one is on um, combating 
stereotypes about women. That's very important. The... If I have time, I would like to discuss that with you. <laughs> oh, you have a, an important, <laughs> as media, you have an important role in that. And the fourth one, which is Egypt is leading, is combating violence against yes. women. And in this, we have been doing a lot of work. The conferences um, took place not only in Paris, but we met also in Amman, we met in Morocco, and we met finally to sort of evaluate the whole process with the four pillars in uh, Barcelona uh, at the beginning of this month uh, in a delegation uh, under the leadership of Dr. Maya Morsi as the National Council of Women uh, President. Uh, I will talk about the one which Egypt is uh, leading, mm. uh, which is combating all forms of violence against women, okay. whether it's verbal violence, physical violence, whether it is in the family or outside the home, in the street, in the working workplace, um, it takes or it deals with issues of harassment, of um, the cost of violence, uh, because there is an economic cost of violence against women. Of course. It prevents her from working, from being a source of income, from being independent, um, and from being sometimes an engine in the society. In the society and an equal partner mm -hmm. to men um, on achieving the progress of this country. And um, we have presented um, a very good uh, presentation on the economic cost of violence. Uh, and we presented also the Egyptian experience on um, receiving complaints about the violence against women, perpetrated against women, how we deal with them through a special office in the National Council of Women, mm. um, how they are classified, how they are dealt with, how do you try to treat them, whether legally or socially, um, how do you how try to- How to raise awareness even, Ambassador? Of that? course. Because sometimes this kind of domestic violence is standardized to the extent that the woman or a girl Consider does not know that this is even violence against, against her, her, that That's this is some true. kind of abuse. She sees this as a normal thing. That's the problem. And with this also harassment, mm -hmm. uh, whether physical or verbal, mm -hmm. um, um, we uh, pointed out to the example of uh, what we call the campaign of El Ta El Marbuta. I know. And it. El Ta El Marbuta is, mm -hmm. as you know, and I hope the spectators know that yeah, because too, we talked about the team. Is program. yes, is the sign of um, feminism. feminism in the Arabic language. Yes. This campaign we presented it in the meetings and it had a great success to the point that many delegations from the Arab um, uh, Mediterranean countries and from Europeans asked us to share with them this experience, the material of that campaign to explain it and they wanted to sort of use it also on their countries. Uh, own mm -hmm. uh, countries wh where they face this kind of problems. Don't think that violence against women is typical of our oriental no, no, or no, no, Arab no. It society. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. It is everywhere, it takes different the forms. The problem, Ambassador Fe, is the awareness, as I mentioned, because in Western countries or in European countries, they know or they realize that this is some kind of abuse against women. Yes. Unlike yes. many areas, unfortunately, here in Egypt, where it is normal uh, to experience uh, such kind of ones. So that's, that's, I think that's the, the, the difference. Uh, and that brings me to the stereotype you asked about. Yes. Uh, the awareness needs to be tackling not only the violence, the harassment, but the stereotype, the acceptance of being the weaker mm. element in the society. Mm. The image you have of the woman as 
a weak person, a non-independent person, submissive. Um, a submissive person, uh, a person who should not aspire neither to leadership or nor passive. to independence nor to e um, economic uh, empowerment. Which is not true, by the way. Which is not true because in reality, the women in our society, and especially in Egypt, they represent 50% of the working force. It might not be the formal sector, mm. but in the informal sector, women are everywhere. And they are supportive of families, whole families. Actually, not um, only economically, but also politically, politically as well. Mm. Uh, of course, we have now a very good example that we have 89, almost 90 women in the parliament. Um, they are the top positions in the banking, in um, the academic field. Um, almost 50% of the students in universities are women, but this is not enough. This is we good in more. theory. You want to see that implemented, yes. clear in all venues of society. And the media here, uh, together with education, together with the role of women themselves, when raising their children, whether male or female, exactly. in creating that awareness that you are dealing with a partner, not with a, an inferior part of the society, whether she's your daughter, she's your sister, she's your spouse, or she's your mother, or your colleague at work, in education, everywhere. Mm. Okay, well that's great, and I hope that this campaign, Eter Marbuta, would continue, and we, as the media, we as the Women's World, we would like to be there and uh, present in all the activities of uh, or the campaigns concerning women because the focus of this program, Ambassador Wafe, is to shed light or to highlight that to change the stereotyping, as you mentioned, yeah. that Egyptian women are not as uh, portrayed in, um, in drama in, in drama or in the media. Cartoons. No, they are successful uh, women, they are ambassadors, they are uh, leaders, they are CEOs, they are... Uh, uh, excellent in sports, in cultures, in arts, That's true. and in, in all fields. And this is actually what we are That's trying to true. do. And in this, you should not only target women, you should also men target as well. men. <laughs> because without this, their to support. Achieve, of course, without the, uh, the, the support of a father, of a brother, of a son, and of a husband, of a, a colleague at work, anywhere. Of a leader, a you political know what, you leader. You are not the first uh, successful lady to come to me and tell me that if I didn't get the support, especially of my husband, I wouldn't have been here. I mean, let's let's try to give credit <laughs> to the men of course. who support of course. women to become uh, successful. Well, the man good. is a father of a daughter, of a woman, mm. and he's a brother, he's a he's a son, he's a husband, he's a partner, um, and. When he is supportive, you, can, uh, you are sure to have a successful recipe for empowerment of women. While, and it's nothing against their uh, femininity mm -hmm. or their del delicate and tender aspect because there is no contradiction. No, of course not. Okay. Now, I have a lot of questions for you. Let's take a short break. We'll watch your profile you. and we'll be right back. Let's watch the profile. Thank you.
unfortunately, our time is up. I did have a lot of questions for you. I wanted you to send a message to the old young women and girls who would like to uh, join the diplomatic field. I wanted you to talk to me about um, what can young Egyptian women and girls do their role in uh, changing the interface, uh, the political and economic face of Egypt. So promise me to come once again to our studio. Perhaps you will have more time to talk about that. Thank you it. very much. I would love to, especially that 2017 will be the year of the woman in Egypt under the patronage of His Excellency uh, President Sisi. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. We had a great time talking to you. Thank you. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this edition of Women's World. Uh, I'll be back again in a few moments with the Our Stop Stories.